Oh. I don't have anything to say really about the Idaho murders themselves. Um, there's been a lot of talk about about this murder and a lot of speculation and a lot of um, you know former law enforcement former investigators former police former whatever that have YouTube channels that are attracting a lot of attention with these cases because um, they sort of have an inside track um, perhaps they have uh, a guest on that's actually seen multiple homicides and walked in on the crime scene and can kind of walk people through. Um, so, uh, you know, I really don't have a, a perspective on these murders, except I felt like uh, the person was inside the house or persons, whoever uh, murdered these four. I just felt like they were already in the house. If it was left unlocked, if they were targeted, um, it's not too, too out of out of, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's not too outrageous of an opinion, I don't think. I, I posted that on it under one of these videos that was, uh, you know, kind of going through the timeline and talking speculatively about it. And I got a lot of backlash. Well, the dog would have been barking. Well, there would have been, you know, how would they sit in there and be quiet the whole time? Um, that's not that difficult. Like, if you are in the mind of killing these people um, and maybe not intending to kill all of them but you're in the of the mind that you are going to kill um, I think you can maintain silence I don't know I'm not a killer but I would imagine you could wait patiently to kill someone um, after all that research I did on Ed Surratt he was very patient uh, staking out his he got sloppy on the last one but that he got caught but I but that's another thing I you know I just I think about him a lot <laughs> sadly <clears throat> because of how calculating he was and how methodical he was at picking his victims most of the time um, so when I you know just kind of look at this I'm thinking why can't they be methodical? It doesn't, because they were murdered on a campus and they were four college students, it doesn't mean that they were killed by a college student. They were probably, I don't know, my guess, killed by someone who was not a college student. And it doesn't even have to be a man. You know, with this type of a blade, it can be a woman. Um... And, and, and no sounds, nobody, they weren't heard. I'm thinking um, he, he could have had the hand over the mouth, over the face, around the throat, stabbed him. Um, it depends on the, the wounds that the coroner found, which they're not talking about. But, but what I did find interesting was there was a former FBI agent on CBS News um, uh, days ago and I just caught it a couple days ago. I watched it a couple times. Her name is Mary Ellen O'Toole. She's a former FBI agent and profiler, and she's the director of George Mason University of Forensic Science program, and she had some really interesting things to say that I hadn't heard on any platform. And I watch, I've been watching um, some of what's out there um, talk about it. I've been actually more consumed with the Shinquilla uh, murder because I, you see her alive and you see her attacked. And it, it for me anyway, it makes me want, want justice right away. Like I, I don't want that to uh, slip away. And because it's in another country and the, the, the problem with extraditing someone, um, the country doesn't have to give her up, you know, it, it, it's just, it's, uh, it's terrible. Um, this equally is as terrible, but we aren't given that ringside seat, or that's a terrible way to phrase that, but we aren't given that 
that really deep insight into their deaths like we have with Shanquella. And the only reason I believe Shanquella Robinson is, is, is getting any kind of justice is because of the number of people that, that uh, heard the story, grabbed onto it, and really pushed it in through social media. And then bringing the parents on, the parents talking, and you know the, 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 um, the people that were made aware of that case became bigger and bigger and bigger in numbers and so rightfully so but that's the power of social media talking about these true crimes but i think with this one everybody is pretty well there's so many people that are aware of it i don't think there's anything more that social media can do to try to solve this crime um other than do their part like like this, just repeat it, uh, talk about it, and and hopefully it just hits on somebody that saw something or knows somebody or is a family member or something, um, and that they come forward. That's that's the only thing you can hope for, or they have some kind of tip that is going to lead to an arrest. But if you listen to this former profile. Uh, Mary Ellen O'Toole. These are some things that she mentioned that I found to be very, very interesting in the short few minutes that she was on the show. She says that um, this that that she read like everybody else, and she heard on the news that the victims were targeted, and she asked, "How are they making that determination?" Because um, if there was one victim that was the target. Um, the murder would be more focused on that one person. Um, was the victim treated any differently out of the four? Was this one stabbed more times or, uh, you know, there's, there's evidence of one victim being targeted more or were they targeted equally? And, and that's why she was asking the question, how did they make the determination that this was an, a targeted attack? And were they able to determine if it was one person that was targeted or was it all of them? You know, there's nothing to say that it was one person. Um, again, I think about Ed Surratt, he didn't target one person to kill. Um, he didn't care about anybody he was killing. They, there wasn't a vendetta. There wasn't vengeance. There wasn't um, anything other than him satisfying his own whatever he was feeling, whatever kind of uh, reward he got from killing and raping people. Um, it didn't matter to him. So I'm thinking that we don't always have to assume that that, that they were targeted because of who they were as people. You know, again, I think, that, I, and I, I'm always wrong, but I think that this was an adult or adults, not a student, but a killer, you know, a serial killer. And um, she also said that he or she or them left behind a lot of evidence because when you stab somebody and multiple people that many times you're going to leave back your own evidence because the knife is going to slip in all the blood. You're going to cut yourself. And she said, chances are very, very good that the murderer's blood is in the mix. And she also said, um, and you know, it doesn't matter if they were wearing gloves because if that knife is that, what they describe that, that, uh, sharp, that brutal, that, that big, you're still going to slip and, and at some point, because one or more of the victims had defensive wounds. Um, so, and there's no telling what was obtained by the, 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 um, the victims that had defensive wounds. Um, there's no telling what they can, can get fibers, um, blood, uh, whatever they were able to collect under their nails or whatever. Um, you know, I'm sure that they're all, they're looking into all of that to try to identify the, 
the killer are killers. Um, that the 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 killer probably wasn't even conscious of that they cut themselves and didn't really care. Um, and she said also too, um, as, the, as far as this person in the home, that she felt like this person probably had been in the home before, knew the layout, um, was familiar with it, and um, had been in there prior to the attacks. But interestingly, she said that this, uh, this, this murderer also used that knife before that perhaps not in killing other people, but the murderer seemed very uh, skilled with that particular knife, that they were able to kill four people, you know, stabbing each one multiple times and leaving, you know, leaving a, a huge uh, crime scene and walking out the door. She said, they asked about uh, gaps in the timeline. She says, yeah, there's gaps because you're not going to know um, when they fell asleep, if they were asleep, and at what time they fell asleep. Um, and if they were, you know, intoxicated, uh, unable to fight back or anything, like you're not going to really know that part of it. And those, those gaps, she said, will probably remain um when you try to piece together a timeline the, at this point the only one that's going to fill in those gaps is the murderer but you do have some experts that can come very very close and they asked about the person that would be using this type of a weapon and she said this is really um about using this type of a murder weapon and she said this is a person who is stabbing someone up close and personal where they can see the face of the person that they're killing they interact with the person they're killing when they're trying to fight or you know ward off death and they see the victim slowly die they watch the victim as they're they watch the life drain out of them and asked about the knife she said it had to be a sturdy knife to stab four people multiple multiple of times and the murderer was efficient with the knife. Um, she said it's doubtful that the murderer would have thrown the knife away. The weapon means something to the uh, killer. And asked a little bit about um, the mind of, of sort of profiling this kind of killer. She said, uh, she said that this was a, a um, not a killing that was done as a reaction to something, but an instrument. Uh, I can't read my own writing. And, and that it wasn't uh, done out of something, a situation, an, an argument, or anything like that. That it was cold-blooded and perpetrated on strangers. Um, she feels like this isn't like a, a crime of passion or anything. This is someone that was just killing to kill. A psychopath. Um, not mentally ill, but um, a psychopath. Uh, someone lacking empathy and guilt. Enjoying high-risk crimes. And... Uh, that this was not done to scare or to threaten, but to kill. The intent was to kill. And asked if this was, if the community should feel threatened, she said yes. This, this killer is a threat to community. If they'll go in and murder four people this way um, and leave, they will do it again. Or the, pos the, the chances of this being done again are very likely. <clears throat> so, but that picture is her. That's the that is the um, 
the profile, the former profiler, and this interview was done on CBS. You can find it on YouTube. Just if you Google her name, you'll see she's wearing a big fur collar and uh, she's very articulate. But but that's all I have to, to say about this. I just felt like what she was saying um, made a lot of sense. To me, it made a lot of sense. And it, it kind of puts to rest that th this would have been a former boyfriend or uh, a friend at school. She she removes that myth that this, you know, because you, they're students and so you get locked in that this was a party house, that this was, um, she had an ex-boyfriend or whatever. You, you kind of feel like um, that this must have been a, a student thing, student to student, but it doesn't seem like it, according to what my my assumption, according to what this profiler was saying, it, it does not seem like it was um, anything like that. So, but it is promising that there was evidence left behind. I mean, you would think so. And the fact that he or she or they left there, um, they would have been covered in blood. And how premeditated was it, you know, with, with gloves, with coveralls, with whatever, how premeditated was it? Uh, but you would think there would be, they just killed and left, so you would assume there would be a trail of blood, that there would be footprints, uh, bloody footprints. Um... You know what I mean? I again, I think about Ed Surratt. He just killed and left. He, he did not um, try to clean anything up or himself um, because the kill. It wasn't like that. Like his killing was just. He didn't. He'd gotten away with so many murders that he he just didn't even. But Edward Surratt, uh, according to everything I I read, he was. He was a killer that was trying to f to f figure out a way to not kill, if that makes any sense. But I, yeah, I'll, I'll um, talk about him another time. But anyway, that's all I have to contribute to this because I found that what she said was really eye-opening.